nice one. Oh, crumbs. Ginger. Everybody's got a proper racket but me. Everybody! Tell you what, let me play with that stupid racket for a bit. No. Come on, it's my sister. It's not your fault I can't get a racket. It's me what stole it from my toy cupboard. It's not your fault, Henry. Whose fault is it? Mm, we all know whose fault it is. Of course we do. I'll say we do. It's Ethel's. Look, please, Ethel. No! I'll only borrow it. Only just now and then. I'll do anything you like for it. Fetch things from upstairs and such. I like... never heard of such a thing as if I'd let you even touch my racket. Where is it? Locked up. Things rot, you know, Ethel, with not being used enough. I bet the little you use that rack is not enough to stop it from rotting. I bet it should be used pretty near all the time to stop it from rotting. I bet it started rotting already with you not using it enough. I'd only use it when you weren't playing. Use it? You? You'd misuse it. Well, I don't care if Jimmy Moore did buy it for your birthday. I like him. Jimmy Moore? Is he one of your beastly outlaws? But... Ethel! Morris! Hi, sir. Will you marry me? I need a little more time, Horace. Oh. To make up my mind. I know I'm not so amusing as Jimmy. Jimmy? Jimmy Moore. I don't think about him, Horace. And I am such a dreadful rabbit at Barrington. What do you mean? I mean I think about you. But he's so good looking. Horace, your father is a Harley Street specialist, and after a few years' general experience, you'll be a Harley Street specialist yourself. Your mother gives dinner parties to important people with titles and goes to first nights in Ascot. But where do I go? Garden parties in summer and amateur theatricals in winter. Horace, before this I'd only ever met people like you in books, and I never really believed in them. Jimmy is good-looking, isn't he? Yes, of course he is. Oh. But we can't have everything. Very true. Uh, Horace, you are devoted to me, aren't you? Oh, hey, but of course. I say. Are you sure you ain't man? I need more time. Oh, no, that line is being so loud before I'm trying to work. I... Oh. I beg your pardon. I, I didn't realise you had a guest. Uh, Daddy, have you met Horace? Dr. Horace Ashdead, Daddy. Hi, did you? Great pleasure. <laughs> Surely we met uh, last week when you called to take Ethel to the rugged dance. No, I don't think so. I think you may have... Um, how shall I say? <laughs> Daddy, no. That was Jane's friend, do you remember? No, I remember quite distinctly. You said to me that we... Oh, oh yes, I see. Silly of me. Ah, so you're a doctor, you say. Where do you practice? Well, nowhere at the moment. You see, I've just left medical school, actually. Lots of possibilities. It's a question of weighing one thing against another at the moment. I see. Oh, Daddy, Horace is hoping to practice here in Hadley. Wouldn't that be splendid? Oh, yes, splendid. Well, I hope we don't see too much of you in this house. In your professional capacity, I mean, of course. Daddy. Oh, oh, no, of course not. Oh, I see exactly what you mean. Oh, capital, capital. <laughs> well, well, I'd better get back to my paperwork. It's been interesting meeting you. Oh, yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Oh, he's all right, really, Horace. He can be quite ripping. Oh, yes, I'm quite sure he can. <laughs> Look, darling, I've got lots to tell you. Why don't we go and get our dindies? What a good idea. Here. Here, here we are. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Do rot, you know, Ethel. Like I said, the look you use that rack is not enough to stop it from rotting. Aye, sir. Is that your brother? No, I think it's a gnome from somebody's garden. Ah. I'll do anything you like for it. Fix them for upstairs and such like. Crumbs. She's even meaner than I thought. Fancy locking it up. Don't sit on the stairs, dear. It's very unhygienic. Uh Now, William, dear, just look at the time. Should have been in bed half an hour ago. You'd better go quickly before your father sees you. Mother, I just wanted to have a little talk. Well, it really is too late now, dear. Get into bed. I'll come and see you in a moment. Yes, but you see, everybody else has got one, and an old one wouldn't cost very much. An old what? What are you talking about, William? What? This one, boy. Uh, Elsin. Uh, this... Vu Eti. That. Je suis. 
Think, boy, think. Who saw me? Duetti. Wretched boy. Du is the singular. It is used when speaking to relatives, friends, children and animals. It is called the familiar. Uh, would you be so good as to repeat that? Oh, um... Oh, always remember to be familiar when addressing your parents and friends. Oh, oh yeah, um, animals. What you don't seem able to understand, Brown, is that I know what you think. I know it as soon as you think it, and sometimes sooner. Before my arrival, you'd been taught French by placid and easy-going gentlemen, and your opinion of them was they didn't much care whether you learnt any French or not. And so you kept yourself very much out of the way by the device of not handing in your exercises. I dare say, in your opinion, you'd better things to do with your time than beastly old French exercises. Well, in my opinion, you haven't, Brown. You haven't. And I don't intend to fail with you. I don't regard you as my Waterloo. Oh, I know what you thought. You thought that after a fair trial, I decided that you were hopeless and devote my energy to more promising material. But I'm not like that, Brown. I'm of the bulldog breed. I could last out as long as you can. But before I'm finished with you, you'll be doing the work you're set and doing it properly. So, why didn't you do last week's exercises? I forgot. Oh, you forgot? Yes. The next time you forget, you'll be sent to the headmaster. I understand that you've got previous experience of interviews with the headmaster. Yes. Guess what? Yes, Mr. Coggan, sir. That's better. It will be very much better when you hand in this week's exercises. Understood? Yes. Sir! I just have to do them. I just have to do French exercises. It's that or being murdered. Mm. In a way, that might be better. What, you mean being murdered once and for all? Instead of being slowly tortured by old cog, same as I am now. Yeah. Yes. Are you coming out tonight? No, I'll be stuck inside doing his exercises. I don't know how he thinks we can live. Stuck inside doing French exercises without fresh air. People die without fresh air. We had a lesson on it once in chemistry. And in history, people died in a place called Blackpool, somewhere in history, because there wasn't any fresh air. Same as you, Will. Yeah, stuck inside doing French exercises without oxygen and such like. The fat lot who use French is going to be to me when I'm dead. Or alive, come to that. I just hope old Cogs will be sorry, that's all. We probably won't be, though. I, I thought I ought to show you this, dear. It's uh, just come for William. Who on earth from? Some people are the limit. Isn't William destructive enough already without firearms? May I ask who could have been so idiotic? Your sister, actually, dear. But you know how fond she is of him. Uh, couldn't we just see how he manages? Well, Lucy doesn't have to pay for the trail of destruction William leaves behind him. I dread to think what he'll do with that. There won't be an animal or a bird safe within miles. He's bad enough with the catapult. And that reminds me, he hasn't paid for the bathroom window yet, has he? Oh, no. No, I don't believe he has. Well, there you are. How can we possibly let him have that? Well, the only trouble is that Lucy's coming next month, and it may be a little difficult to explain why we didn't give it to him. You know how easily she gets hurt. Uh. So, you think, then, that perhaps if he's very careful... Careful? Very well, dear. I'll tell him to be careful. I think you're quite right. He's a big boy now, and as you say, he should learn to be sensible. came for you from your Aunt Lucy. What is it? Have you done your homework? It's an air rifle. I know it is. I can see it is. Well, it's one of her unbirthday presents, and I've promised your father that on no account will you fire at any bird or animal, and that you will take particular care not to point it at anyone in the road.
William? William? It's past your bedtime. William? William? Oh. You'll never be in time for school, William, if you don't hurry. What's that? It's William. My goodness, William, aren't you dressed yet? Mother, I'm not feeling very well. Now, William, don't start that again. I don't want to, but I've got this awful pain. Oh. What's the matter with him? He says he doesn't feel well. Mm, the last time he said that, he had a limp, didn't he? I drove him to school in the car, and you happened to pass by at lunchtime, and saw him running freely all over the playground. And, of course, when he came home, he limped very slowly up the garden path with grimaces of supreme agony. Was that the time before when he had rheumatism? No, I think that was the limp. I think I'll go and speak to him. Now, William, you know quite well there's nothing the matter with you. Breakfast's ready, and you'll only get into trouble if you're late for school. Oh, rubbish, William. If you're very quick, you'll have time for breakfast and still not be late for school. It's your favourite breakfast. It's bacon and mushrooms. Oh, oh, I don't want mushrooms. Oh, but you love mushrooms. You usually try to bribe Ethel to give you a share of hers. Oh, oh. oh, oh where does it hurt, dear? Here. Oh, oh, oh William. Oh, I don't know what to say. I think you'd better stay in bed. You mean... Not go to school. Well, you can't go to school if you're in pain. But, but I've got important work to do. Oh, don't be silly, dear. You can't what go if you're ill. noise? Oh, he really what? does seem to be in pain, dear. Yes, I remember when he really had a rash. He put it on himself with Ethel's lipstick. I also remember when his face was swollen up like a balloon. The swelling went down when he was persuaded to open his mouth. Well, in this case, the pain seems to be here. Ah. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I don't suppose there's anything the matter at all. You can have Dr. Bell, if you like, just to make sure. No, I must be off, dear. Oh, I'll, I'll just make you comfortable. Now, I'll, I'll telephone Dr. Bell. I've just come by to confirm our arrangements for this evening. I'll call for you at about five o'clock. Super. And then we'll go straight to the badminton club. Super. Now, you'll see, I've been practising. Oh, Ethel, I wish I could do something that would really impress you. Oh, Dr Ashton, what a blessing you're here. I telephoned Dr Bell, but he's been delayed at the surgery. Would you mind coming upstairs for a moment? I'm afraid William's not well. Oh, I say. I'll just go and fetch my bag from the car. William, Dr. Bell was delayed, but very luckily, Dr. Ashstead called to see Ethel, so he can examine you. Now, where exactly did we say the pain was? Here. Here? Ah! It really does seem ah! to be in pain. Now, William, sit up and open up. There. Ah. Isn't Horace simply wonderful? He'll end up in Harley Street at the very least. He'll probably have a reputation as the most brilliant doctor of his day. I can't think how I ever seriously considered Jimmy Moore. Look at the way Horace slips those little things into his ears. 
wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And he can quite obviously tell exactly what's happening inside William just by those little tappings and pullings about. Isn't it a wonderful privilege to know a man as brilliant as that? I mean, a squeaky voice and the way he keeps missing at badminton doesn't matter at all, really, does it? Just look at the way he folds up that little telescope thing and puts it back into his bag. Wonderful. Ah! Well, I'm afraid you'll have to stay there for a little while, William. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, yes, yes. what he's saying. Mrs. Brown, I'm afraid it's a case of liver trouble. He'll have to stay in bed until that place stops hurting and then he can get up. He shouldn't go to school for a day or two, but he must go out and get all the fresh air he can. Mrs. Brown, um, I'm afraid it's a case of acute appendicitis. What? Well, yes, we shall get him removed to the Hadley nursing home at once for an immediate operation. Not an operation? Well, yes, an operation. Cases of this sort, delay could be fatal. Mrs. Brown, if I could use your telephone, I'll inform Dr. Bell at once. I'm sure he'll wish to operate himself. Oh, and don't tell the boy. He should be kept very quiet. There's no real danger, is there? There's always danger in operations for acute appendicitis. William? It, it, it is liver, isn't it? I expect so, dear. I want you to have this, William. Ethel, I'm not delirious, am I? Not yet, dear. Oh. 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 Thank you. Thank you awfully, Ethel. I'm beginning to feel a bit better now. Poor William. Mother? What are you doing? Shh! Nothing, dear. Well, I'm ever so much better now. I can push that place without it hurting. Now, William, I want you to be a good boy and do everything you're told. Yeah, I'm ever so much better. That place doesn't hurt. No, dear, I'm sure it doesn't. Push it and see. No, not now, dear. Well, we're waiting for Dr. Bell. He says he'd like to examine you himself first. First? Did I say first? He's going to send me to school. Oh, don't be silly, dear. Oh, I'm ever so much better. I've seen a doctor. It's just a bit of liver. Oh, yes, dear. Of course it is. I'm sure you are. Now, you lie down, dear, and don't tire yourself with talking. Talking doesn't tire me. That place doesn't hurt anymore. I've seen a doctor. I'm all right now. I don't want to see Dr. Bell. It's only making a lot of expenses for you. No, money is nothing where health is concerned. Yes, but that place is all right now. Push it and see. No, dear, it isn't. It couldn't possibly have got right in this short time. Well, perhaps it's not quite all right, but it will be when I've had some fresh air. Fresh air is all it wants, shh. and plenty of exercise, oh, like shh. badminton. I've seen Dr. Ashton, and that's enough. Shh, shh dear, don't no, talk so much. You'll exhaust yourself. Oh. oh, Dr. Bell, what a blessing you're here. We've been so worried. Oh, but Horace, Dr. Ashton has been marvellous. Oh, he has. Of course he has. I'm just sure when we go upstairs you'll confirm my diagnosis. I know this patient of all, Dr. Ashton. I'll examine him alone. Oh. Would you... I know the way, Mrs. Brown. Thank you. Well, where's this pain? Oh, it was a jolly bad pain. Here. There. Where? Ah! Oh, ah. so that's where the pain is. Oh, yes. 
On your left side. Oh, it's a jolly bad pain. Oh, I'm sure it is. Ah! Now, this doesn't hurt, does it? Uh, no. But this does. Ah! Poor William. He must be in such dreadful pain. Bravery, Mrs. Bryan. Bravery. That's a thing now. Bravery and confidence in medical science. Oh, Doctor, will you operate at once? I shan't operate at all. Oh, dear. Is it as bad as that? I'll tell you how bad it is. There's nothing wrong with him at all. What? Surely his stomach, the pain. Yeah, absolutely, the pain. What side was the pain? White. He told me left. He what? I suggest you go back to medical school, Dr. Ashted. I don't want you in my practice. I've no use for a man who can be fooled by a mischievous boy. Oh, boy. I mean, I, I'm a Harley Street. I mean, I'm a... How dare he? Oh, Ethel, I presume I'll see you tonight as arranged. Uh, no. Actually, I said I'd meet Jimmy Moore. Oh! As for the patient, I shall send him to school on a strict diet, a very strict diet. That should partially meet the case. <laughs> What a rotten cheek. I'd have been better having my appendix out. Old Cogs found out about the French exercise and sent me to the head. And the head said the worst things that ever been said to me. And Ethel took her racket back. And your sister, your rotten sister, took hers. Oi. I hear you're in want of a badminton racket. Uh, would you like this? But, but it's a new one. Yes, I just happened to see it. I see. Hey, who's that? Is it Jimmy Moore, isn't it? Yes. Thanks. Thanks most awfully, Jimmy. Oh, that's all right. Uh, just don't tell anybody. Uh, not till you're a bit more popular. No, all right, I won't. <laughs> I say, don't you think it was rotten of Ethel to take her racket back? Well, She'd give it me. Depends which way you look at it. Yeah, and I know which way I look at it. <laughs> yes, I quite see your point of view. <laughs> well, well, thanks a lot, Jimmy. Um, I'd better go now. I'll be late for the game. OK, <laughs> bye. OK, bye. Oh. Oh. In London. Yeah, made in London. Come on, come on. 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 Come on.